You are, of course. We're excited you're here today, and we're excited that Josh has agreed to join us for today's webinar, The Responsive Design Revolution. Uh, he's going to talk to us a little bit about responsive uh, web design, why it's important for your business, and how you can get started with it. It'll be a great webinar. Uh, we're excited you're here today to give you a little bit of background. Uh, my name is McKay Allen. I'm with Log My Calls. We're a call tracking and call analytics solution, so we can tell businesses, professional services businesses, uh, precisely which marketing channels are generating phone calls, which organic keywords are generating calls, which PVC campaigns are generating calls, etc. Uh, that's kind of where we fit in the whole process. Uh, we host these marketing webinars once or twice a week, and uh, they've been a really great tool to provide useful information to the audience, uh, so we're excited you're here. A couple of house cleaning items, then I'll introduce Josh and we can get, we can get started. Uh, first, if you have questions during the webinar, type those into the little question uh, go to webinar pane on the right hand side of your screen just type those questions in and then at the conclusion of Josh's presentation uh, I will uh, read the questions to him and he can address as many as we'll get to we want to end at the uh, on the hour uh, no later so so we'll get to as many questions as we can during the time we have uh, without further ado I will introduce Josh uh, as you know he's the principal and founder of Miles Design based in Indianapolis uh, he drives brand strategy, business development, firm-wide marketing. He's been honored uh, as uh, one of Indianapolis Business Journal's 40 Under 40. Um, works with a lot of professional services firms in Indianapolis, but also around the country. His new book uh, called Bold Brand, The New Rules for Differentiating Branding and Marketing Professional Services Firm, is selling like hotcakes and uh, encourage you to pick up a copy. So he's spoken at a lot of different uh, events, shows around the country. Uh, we were actually recommended, uh, we, Josh was actually recommended to us for us to reach out to him uh, by a, a few of our other webinar guests that we've had in the past. They said Josh will really do a good job on a webinar, so you ought to reach out to him. And, and so it's been a pleasure working with him to set this up. So we're excited he's here. Uh, and with, uh, with no further delay, we'll turn it over to you, Josh. Well, McKay, it's a good thing that uh, you can't see me because I'm blushing right now. Um, thank you for that uh, that introduction, and it's uh, it's my pleasure to be here today. Um, hope everybody's having a good uh, sunshiny afternoon as we are enjoying here in Indianapolis. Uh, as McKay said, I do uh, speak a lot on these kinds of things. I've got a talk actually later this week in beautiful uh, Wichita, Kansas that I've not been to yet, but I'm just expecting it to be beautiful. So today we're going to be talking about the responsive design revolution. Is your website ready for what's next? Um, I've been talking a lot about responsive design, especially over the course of the last year, 18 months. And uh, so hopefully today we will answer some questions for everyone on the line today about what exactly responsive design is. Why is it important? Is it important for me? Is it important for my website? Is this a good fit for my audience? And is it time for our company to invest in something like uh, responsive design? So um, here is, uh, is what I look like, in case you're curious. And more importantly, keep in mind the giant watch that's on my arm there. We'll talk more about that later. Um, McKay told you a little bit about me. If you want to learn more about um, our firm or the book Bold Brand, you can visit milesdesign.com or boldbrand.com. Again, we do uh, specialize in branding and design for professional services firms. We work with a lot of architects, engineers, and software companies. So. And hey, Josh, it's McKay. Sure. Sorry to interrupt you, sir. So I'm getting a few people uh, saying they have a, are having a hard time hearing it. Can you talk a little bit louder, or perhaps turn your microphone up a touch, sir? Sure, we can dial it up a little bit more. Is that better? Yeah, I think that's a little bit better. And, and uh, if you're still a little, if you, if you're still too low, guys, just send the send that in the question or chat area, and, and he'll. He'll just start yelling. So uh, anyway, well, let us know. <laughs> I'll just Josh. scream at the microphone. <laughs> Thanks. Well, cool. Uh, we'll just jump in here. Um, so today will be all about conversation. So please do um, feel free to engage with us and tell everybody in the Twitter sphere how awesome the webinar was. You can tweet to at logmycalls and at Josh Miles. Um, please ask questions in the chat pane. We'd love to have some time for Q&A at the end here and uh, you know if you've got any particular examples or uh, other things that you think of while we're going throw that in the uh, Q&A pane as well. Um, old brand. So part of why I'm here on the call today was um, 
this book, Bold Brand. And this is really a uh, kind of a mix between um, best practices and a lot of case studies about different elements of marketing and branding and professional services firms. So if you're curious, I definitely encourage you to check that out. We're going to be giving a free chapter of the book to everybody who's on the call today. So stick around for that info later. Um, and one last thing I wanted to touch on is my personal expertise is more on the B2B side of the fence. So I think responsive design is a great fit for everybody B2B and B2C. But um, again, our focus is B2B and professional services. Um, and so just wanted to point that out before we got further into it. Um, so simply put, um, Responsive web design really is kind of a big deal. I hope everyone gets the Ron Burgundy joke there. But um, this is really, really, really one of the most um, impactful changes to web design in the last 10 years. You know, there's a lot of talk about web 2.0, and I think responsive design really opens up a whole new um, realm of, of options and ideas to web designers and to clients and how to better interact with their visitors um, on their website. So let's talk a little bit more about what exactly is responsive web design. So responsive web design uh, in layman's terms is the taking one website and having it work in multiple views. So if you've got a website that works in a desktop view and you open it up on your tablet, that site is going to look right, it's going to be optimized, the elements are going to scale, and all the way down to a uh, mobile device, uh, iPhone, cell phone, uh, you know, Sprint phone, Android device. Everything's going to look right, it's going to flow together, and things are going to look smooth and appropriate. You're, more importantly, you're going to be able to show what you want to show on that device. In fact, the site that we're showing here is actually Mashable.com. Um, and Mashable back in uh, 2012 declared 2013 is the year of responsive web design. If you're interested in checking out that article and see why they said so, um, Mashable is really um, one of the, the big voices in the world of uh, technology. I encourage you to check out that article. But um, maybe if we want to get a little bit more technical, we can look at um, what our friends at Wikipedia had to say about responsive web design. So they, they define responsive as a web design approach aimed at crafting sites to provide an optimal viewing experience, easy reading and navigation with a minimum of resizing, panning, and scrolling across a wide range of devices from desktop computer monitors to mobile phones. So some of you might be thinking, okay, I, you know, I have an iPhone and I looked at my website on there and it's not quote unquote responsive, but it works. You know, you can see it, you can zoom, you can pinch, you can zoom, and all that stuff. So, so why bother? Well, I'll tell you why you should bother. The reasons you should bother or are your visitors, your visitors, your visitors. And specifically, you need to think about your visitors' devices, your visitors' experience, and your visitors' expectations. So let's, let's unpack a little bit more what I mean by each of those. So, most importantly in your, or first off, when it comes to your visitor devices, how can you understand exactly how your website is being viewed? Well, one easy way to do that is to use a tool like, like Google Analytics. So if you log in to your Google Analytics account, um, you can go see over in the left-hand side underneath audience. You can drop down to technology and look at browser and operating system. So then underneath browser and operating system, you see the bar underneath where it says visits, page visit, and average visit duration, that first pink box there. Click on the tab that says operating system. So in this particular example, you'll see that 10.26% of the visits to this site were on an iOS device. That means it's a, an iPhone or an iPad. Um, 1.79 percent of these visits were to were from an Android device. Uh, you got half a percent to BlackBerry, half a percent to Windows Phone. Um, I'm not a math major, but that totals somewhere around 13 or 14 percent. So, 
Um, for me, anything, McKay, I don't know how you feel about this, but I think anything that's over 10% of your visitors are going to encounter something like this, I think that's starting to make a legitimate argument that responsive is something that you should consider. Yeah, so again, I think, I think I think that's a good threshold. I agree. So I think if if you're looking at um, so that's that's my very very unofficial opinion. But I think if you're if you're well below ten percent, maybe now is not the time for you. But I, I think if over ten percent of your visitors are engaging with your site um, on a mobile device, I think this is definitely something you should think about. So let's let's take that a step further. So all right, I've got a uh, a website that is um, viewable on my iPhone. I open it up. I don't have any Flash elements. Everybody knows that Flash and iOS are a bad combo. So I can still see all my content. I can still see everything. I can just pinch and zoom until my little heart's content. But I think there's a big difference between the idea of being mobile friendly or having a website that's, um, that was really considering mobile first. So I think in the context of um, you know, that site where you can pinch and zoom and move around, yes, that website is accessible through a mobile device, but are you really providing the best possible experience? Um, you know, for me, I think one of the big questions is, are you going to lose your visitors at hello? So I think there's a couple questions you ask yourself about that. You know, when someone is visiting your site, you really have to put yourself in the visitor's shoes. So when someone is visiting your site on a mobile device, why are they there in the first place? So if I think about um, most of our clients, um, you know, in the professional services space, and, and if one of their prospects is visiting their website on their mobile device, there's one of a couple things possibly occurring. Um, one of those things is maybe I'm lost, literally. I'm trying to find your office. I'm looking for your business. I can't find you. I can't remember what suite you're in. I can't remember which building it is. I'm just looking for your information. Perhaps when I'm lost or maybe I'm running late, I'm just looking for your phone number. Maybe I don't have you in my contacts and I'm looking for what's the office phone number. Maybe it's as simple as um, I'm doing a little bit of research, or maybe it's as simple as um, you just sent me a marketing email, and studies are showing that over 50% of marketing emails are being opened on a mobile device today. So if you've got a great call to action inside that email, and I click through to your mobile website, what kind of experience am I going to have when I get there? So I think thinking through those things, but also, um, so if you're on a tablet versus desktop versus mobile, where is it that you want that visitor to go when they arrive on your site? And I think ultimately the, the big question that very few people ask themselves until maybe after a site goes live or after they're trying to troubleshoot some conversion, um, you know, very few people ask the question, what do I want the visitor to do when they come to my website? Now maybe that answer is there are a lot of different things that I would like for somebody to do, but you know, we all work so hard as marketers to try to get people to come to our site in the first place. So, you know, congratulations, we, we succeeded, we got that person to come to our site. But now what? What do we want them to do? And especially on a mobile device or on a tablet, how does that change what we want you to do? So um, considering that question and then from a visual hierarchy standpoint, thinking through what is visually the most important thing on the page, I think can help you set up a much more successful um, experience for your visitor. So this isn't just some random stock photo guy. This is, um, uh, according to Google, this is uh, the Prime Minister of, of Norway. So uh, this, this guy is kind of a big deal. Here he is kind of caught using his, his iPad, doing a little research, maybe some leisurely reading, maybe he's checking his stocks. But expectations of visitors now from, um, you know, Joe down the street all the way to the Prime Minister of Norway is that they're going to use 
whatever device they have at that moment, and they want to be able to get on your site, and they want to be able to figure out what they need to figure out, and they want to do it right there. They don't really want to have to deal with the issues of, oh, your website's not all that mobile friendly, or, okay, well, it doesn't render all that great on the tablet, or maybe it's, maybe we've got a mobile phone version, we just, we just haven't done anything with the tablet yet. You know, the visitor expectation is that when I'm waiting in the airport or waiting for my meeting to show up, I can pop this open and do research or think through what I want to think through. So um, visitor um, expectations um, are a big deal. So is this just a fad? Um, that's a great question. You know, all the latest and greatest things that show up on, on websites, um, it's easy to think this might be a passing fad. I, I don't think it is, and here's, here's a couple of reasons why. Um, first of all, the big boys are doing it. Um, so if you go to Microsoft.com uh, and check out their site, you will find a very responsive, uh, fluid layout. And I think it's, uh, as this is coming from an Apple fanboy, mind you, but I, I think Microsoft, um, for the first time in a really long time, has a really great, um, really great website. So you'll see that not only are they doing uh, a regular desktop and tablet and mobile view, but they also have um, what I would call a jumbo uh, homepage view. So if you have one of these oversized monitors, uh, or heaven forbid, or from Microsoft's point of view, a you know one of the large screen iMacs, this site's going to look really good on that screen. So the, the image continues to expand out left to right. There's some great white space on either side. And it just feels like this site is designed and set up for view uh, on a big screen. And when you're on your phone, same story. It still feels really great. So in addition to the big boys, um, even the little guys are doing it well. This is a, a small business. This is one of our clients. So of course, we had to show at least one of our examples in here. But this is a site we've been working on for a few months. It's going to go live here in the coming weeks. And it's for an interior design firm that's based out of Indianapolis, Austin, Texas, and San Antonio, Texas, called Carson Design. So um, check out Carson Design in the coming weeks. But this is a really great site in that um, when you go from the desktop view, it's really all about focusing on the big image and the big work. And there's a great slideshow that goes through all the images there. And when you go down to the tablet view, you might be able to tell the logo centers, the navigation centers over the image, and it just starts to scale down and make sense for that view. And then when you get down to the mobile phone view, it actually hides all the navigation. The logo changes to the, um, the vertical version of the logo. And we're making some key decisions about going from view to view to view or device to device about what things we think are most important and what we think that visitor is looking for. So if you remember the giant watch in, the, in that early slide there, um, that brand is Nixon. And Nixon actually has, I think, a really nice uh, responsive website as well. When you go to the, the home screen, there's actually uh, a dual photo of a guy and a girl on the front. And you can choose if you want to go into the men's merchandise or women's merchandise. But this is an example of the, uh, in the B2C or e-commerce space of a, you know, a, a growing brand who's doing a really nice job um, with responsive design. So again, thinking about um, how much email marketing and how much digital marketing is going on out there, your customers, your uh, prospects are going to be landing on their site on the same device that they're checking those emails on. So you've got to make sure that that site is friendly and it's going to work on that platform. So um, sort of begs the question, you know, our site is not yet responsive. We've been uh, wrapping ours up over the last couple of weeks. I think Carson is going to beat us out the door, um, but look forward to a future milesdesign.com that is, that is a responsive layout. So another big question that we get is, hey, Josh, why don't we just do a mobile app? Like, why, why bother responsive if we could just throw an app up on the app store? Well, there's a couple of reasons for that. Um, Mobile apps are great if you've got unique content, or you're going to use that app to push content out to your viewer. Um, if you've got a game, if you've got a product that you want people to interact with and it's only on your phone, I think that's fantastic. 
The downside to mobile app is unless you can really carve out a space on a particular platform or device, you're paying to create and recreate and recreate and recreate that app across all the different platforms and all the different devices. So having the view for your retina display iPad view and for your iPhone and for your Android device and for your Windows mobile phone, it gets really, really expensive. So if you're thinking about um, in terms of a traditional website that's more marketing focused, you're probably a lot better off and going to get a lot more bang for your buck by doing a responsive web design than doing an app. So um, on the flip side here, um, you know, responsive is a very cutting edge technology. It's a very cutting edge approach. Um, if it's done correctly, your responsive site will respond to any platform and any device. And in fact, you know, if, if Apple announces tomorrow a new tablet that's got some funky new size, um, if your site is set up correctly, your responsive site will already be set up to fit that new device because um, of just the way uh, those, those fallbacks work. And uh, there's a concept of something that's fluid or not fluid. So you'll see some responsive sites that maybe have big steps. So you go from desktop and you shrink down a little bit and it takes a big step and it goes to tablet. And then it shrinks some more and then it goes a big step down to mobile where a fluid layout is just going to adjust to every possible size in between. So it's getting into some geeky details, but while we're on geeky details, here's a few other things you might be interested to hear. Um, so Another great benefit to a responsive website is responsive happens all on the front end of the design. And what that means is if you're using a content management system, even something as simple as WordPress, which we are, uh, are big fans of. We've done plenty of WordPress sites that are um, responsive on the front end and WordPress on the back end. You can use that single content management system or CMS with a single database to drive all the different views and all the different layouts for that responsive website. Um, so if you're a marketer, the, uh, the less geeky version of this is if you want to update your mobile site, your tablet site, and your desktop site, you only update your homepage in one place. You only make one change to About Us. You only make one change to your team. And that information is going to be live across all of the different devices and all the different widths. Um, so that responsive layout um, in effect is detecting the size of the view and it's showing what it's supposed to show. Um, now that there are really two main approaches to do responsive. One is to just um, select a grid, which is a sort of a fancy way of saying which size you want things to fall into. And you can just allow that grid to behave in its default manner. Or you can determine, hey, I want to hide and show these certain elements when I get to this point. An example of that is you may have a huge banner image uh, slideshow on your home page of your desktop site. And maybe when you get down to mobile, maybe you just want to show the phone number and the address and you want to lose that slideshow. You have the option in a responsive layout to hide that element or if you want uh, on a certain um, platform to fall back to something more simple, you can always just show a single image instead of that slideshow. So it gets into a little bit of the geeky details, but um, hopefully that gives you enough information to be dangerous when you're talking to your IT department about why, why responsive makes sense for you. So this is, um, if you haven't seen this little trick before, I was looking for a photo of somebody who had their hands kind of opposite each other, showing how, how wide or how long the fish was that they caught, because when you do that and Pull your hands in and out, in and out, kind of like you're playing symbols. That's the, uh, the universal hand signal for a responsive website. But um, the other way that you can tell if the website is responsive is if you grab that lower right-hand corner of your browser and drag it to the left and then back to the right. Drag it to the left and back to the right. You can see if the elements on that page are rearranging and resizing for that device width or if they're just starting to hide the elements on the page. So again, if you go to our current site, milesdesign.com, and grab that corner, um, you're not going to see anything happen except for stuff that starts to hide. If you go to matchable.com and do that same thing, you'll see how all those elements start to rearrange or, um, 
or again, Microsoft.com is another, another good example. So how do you know if it's time to invest in responsive design? Well, hopefully I've given you a couple of good places to start. Um, but I think ultimately it comes down to thinking about return on investment. And as marketers, I'm sure you're used to um, showing that return um, to your bosses to get, to get budget approved and all of those kinds of things. But I think if you think through, okay, what is a new client worth to us? Um, how regularly are we going to be marketing to people over email? Do we think we're losing clients or losing opportunities because people are clicking on our email and they can't find the next thing that they're looking for? If you can answer yes to any of those things, I think it's something to definitely consider. Um, if it's a part of a redesign in the first place, adding responsive to your website may be a really, really small percentage of the project. Um, depending on the size, it, it may add it may add 10% to the project. It may add 25% to the project. But again, it's not it's not a huge huge element. Um, and I think the timing is right as far as the technology goes and the adoption of of mobile to take a good close look at responsive design for your next project. Um, and something we we tell so many of our clients is you run a great business and you've made it this far. But all the things that you've done in business to get to you to this point are not the same things you're going to need to do to get you to the next stage. So I think responsive design is probably one of those things that may help uh, elevate your site and differentiate uh, your offering as you get further along in business. So that was a lot of information today. Um, I'm sure we have have a lot of questions. Um, I do want to thank you for um, sticking around for the webinar. We're going to be posting, um, I'm happy to share all the slides with everyone who's on the call today. If you would go to milesdesign.com slash rwd, we'll send you um, all of today's slides. We'll send you a discount for the book, um, Bold Brand, and uh, maybe we'll send you a few other goodies uh, as well as a, uh, a free chapter of the book as well. Um, McKay, I believe you had an offer for everyone who's on the webinar today as well, right? Yeah, that's right. Um, we, uh, we always extend this on our webinar, so I encourage you to take us up on the offer. It's a free trial of Log My Calls. It'll help you track where your campaigns are successful. If they're not, if your web is producing phone calls, that's especially critical in the mobile space. That tap to call functionality on mobile sites especially is, uh, drives a lot of calls. So uh, test it out. Uh, take it for a test drive for 30 days for free. Uh, just use that uh, password there on the, the uh, uh, screen, the coupon code, rather. Uh, we do have a few questions, Josh, if you want to take a couple, sir. Sure. Um, so here's, uh, here's a couple of, of, of good questions. So in terms of types of businesses, uh, I guess the, the biggest question people are asking is, when do you know if your business is ready to pursue responsive web design? Um, is there a certain type of business that it, you know should pursue it first, or how do you know? What's your general sort of rules for for when you know if you're ready or not? That's a great question. I think um, going to back to uh, one of those early slides, I think just simply breaking down your analytics and looking at um, what are those device types and browser types that are viewing my site today, and what, which one's the greatest percentage? You know, is, is it heavy Android use? And if so, let's take a look at what our site and our experience looks like on an Android device. Is it clean? Is it simple? Can people figure it out? Are they having to, you know, zoom in really far to the text to figure this out? Um, I think that will start telling you a lot about if the timing is right for you. And I think as far as industries go, I mean, I think it's, it's maybe less of an industry question um, and more of a, a prospect question. So if, you know, if you're an e-commerce business, um, this seems like a no-brainer to me. So somebody like Nixon who's already doing a great amount of email, um, you know, it's a no-brainer for them to have a really great responsive site. So when I'm checking out watches or doing something on the couch at night on my tablet, it only makes sense that that works smoothly for me. Um, 
And I, I think this applies just as much in, in the business to business um, case, especially if you're doing any level of email marketing. And what was the statistic you had? You said this at the very start of the webinar, and I, I didn't catch it, and, and uh, maybe some other folks didn't as well. But you had a, a data point about the number of people that open web or excuse me, open emails on their on their mobile devices or something to that effect. Do you remember that number you threw out there, Josh? I do. I've been using the number fifty percent, and I think depending on which email service providers um, research you're looking at, most of them are between um, the high thirties and low sixties of percent of opens that happen on a mobile device. And again, that's going to be really aggregated over the course of different different verticals and different industries. So, um, you know, just like the, the analytics thing, I think go back and look at your email service provider's data on your list. How much of your list and your audience is viewing your email on a mobile device and how much of it is happening on desktop and tablet? Great. That's that's good information. Um, here's a couple more questions, Josh. So what is the typical time commitment to turn one site to a responsive uh, site? How, how long does the process take and how does somebody get started? So a couple interesting things. I mean, one, if, if you're in the midst of a website redesign in the first place, adding responsive um, to the process may add, may add a few days or a few weeks or a few months. It really just kind of depends on the breadth website. But I would say for a typical, you know, 50 to 75 page professional services website for us, responsive might add a week or two at most. Um, and a lot of that is just in, in troubleshooting of different elements because we wouldn't typically just, you know, use the grid and let things fall where they may. We're going to want to um, troubleshoot and really tie in which elements we want to show up where and and how we want people to interact on each device. So that's really what, what adds the time. It's not so much the creating a responsive site, so much as troubleshooting and, and tweaking out the details. Great. Uh, here's another question. This is from Lindsay. She says, do you need to, is it better to be at the beginning of sort of a whole revamp to do it, or should you, you know, if you, if you haven't done anything to your site in a while and don't plan on it, should you attack a, you know, a, a responsive web design project, or is it better to wait until you're going to redesign the whole thing and start from scratch? No, that's a good question. I think um, it depends on what state you're, this is really geeky, it depends on what state your HTML is in. So um, if a front-end developer can get in there and you know, if you're already using WordPress and you've got, or you've got a great content management system that's serving up all the data, really you're just talking about re-slicing the HTML to work in a responsive um, format. We're not talking about something that has to be a, a wholesale redevelopment of your site. It's really more of a front-end function. So um, it could be worthwhile if you're not uh, planning to, to redesign that whole site anytime soon. Maybe this would be a great baby step of a way to um, uh, drive some more conversion on your current site. And then the other question um, that uh, we're curious about is, Obviously, your expertise is in responsive web design, but also in branding. I mean, given the title of your book and some of the things you've written and, and, and whatnot, how, how does this whole idea of responsive web design play into the branding of a company and the perception customers have of that company? I, it's kind of a broad question, but I'm, I'm curious about your response. Yeah, I think that's a great question. Um, so for us and for probably most people who consider themselves um, branding people, we see every every touch point and every interaction with your prospect has a great opportunity to either build up your brand or have a not so hot experience. So um, again, just kind of playing a numbers game, if you've got a lot of prospects that are viewing your site on mobile and it's not such a hot experience, I think that's ultimately going to uh, give people a not so great opinion of your brand. Whereas um, being on a site that's just seamless regardless of the device and if I want to interact with your site and learn more about you when I'm on the sofa at home or when I'm uh, on my mobile device waiting for a meeting to start, um, you know, that's really just going to build up my opinion of how you operate as a company and, you know, make me feel better about your brand. Um, you know, I can, I can hear people almost hear their eyes rolling, you know, I'm not going to feel better about you just because your website works. <laughs> well, I, I think there's 
there's maybe more clearly the opposite problem, which is, you know, your website didn't work when I wanted to use it, so now I don't feel so great about your brand. Great. Uh, and then a couple of couple more questions we're getting a, a few times here. Uh, in terms of, of when this webinar will be actually uh, available, because you mentioned the slides are going to be available, we'll also make the recording available on our site. So I'm going to take the screen, Josh, and just show people where that is real quick. Yeah, perfect. Uh, make sure it's going to work here. Okay, so this is logmycalls.com. Uh, you go to logmycalls.com, and then down here, click on the webinar series button and you will see uh, uh, this webinar today. You'll also see some future webinars that we have coming up. Uh, and the next video, what we'll do is we'll, we'll create a video of this webinar, the recording, and it'll be available on this page. So logmycalls.com slash webinar dash series. So that will be available uh, as soon as, uh, I'll, I'll start rendering the video as soon as we're off the call today. So you can come in and view that at your leisure and then it sounds like Josh will make the slides available as well. Uh, a couple more questions, Josh, before we conclude. In terms of the effectiveness of responsive web design for different uh, different businesses, is there a level of priority that you would place on, um, you know, uh, tablets versus uh, phones, or is it? What's the process like? I guess can people say, well, I want it for tablets because we're getting a lot from iPads versus and I mean, what's the process there? How does one just begin the process of, of starting the site and then can they choose where they want to begin and end? How does that whole process work? That might be a not I'm not a very technical guy, so that may be a poor way to ask the question that people are asking on, on online, so I apologize. Sure, no, that's a great question. Um, so I think if you have your site built on a responsive grid and really that's all you did. You just kind of pushed it out into the default grid. Um, you'd have certain fallbacks that work just sort of by themselves. So, um, you know, maybe you want to invest more time in dialing in that, that mobile device first. Maybe just let tablet and other kind of odd devices fall where they do, where they may, um, until that time to get uh, more energy or resources available to invest in those. But, um, I think if I were going to tackle just one element of responsive beyond the desktop, it would it would definitely be the the mobile device, um, especially if you think about uh, iPad or some of the other large uh, tablet devices. You know, most websites in their in their standard view are pretty usable uh, in a tablet view, so it's not the end of the world if it's not responsive. I think one of the most obvious things that uh, that you'll see really quickly comparing a responsive site and a non-responsive site head-to-head -head on your phone is frankly just the text size. So if you look at, um, again, go to our current site, milesdesign.com, open that up on your phone, you'll see the text is really, really tiny. You really have to pinch those in to get in to read the copy. Um, if you pull up that Microsoft site, you've got a nice big copy that, that's easy to read and you don't feel like you have to you know, pull it up to your eyes or, or pinch to zoom to, to read stuff. So I think if I were going to tackle just one thing, I would maybe tack on the, uh, the mobile device. Great. That's good. Good answer. Uh, and then finally, I, I want to uh, piggyback on something Josh said a moment ago, uh, sort of at the start of the webinar, about how this is useful for B2B companies as well. I mean, we're, we're seeing, we're a B2B company, right? We sell to other businesses, uh, marketing firms as well as end user uh, you know, clients in the professional services world and other other uh, uh, verticals, and we're seeing a huge increase in the number of uh, people visiting our site from mobile devices and tablets. So, uh, you know, it's not just a B to C thing. Businesses are are looking on their devices, whether it's at home in the evening or what have you, for uh, websites that they need to buy services from for their business. So, uh, it's not just a B to C concern. Would you agree with that, Josh? Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. So actually, one of the very first um, responsive sites that we did was for a company here in Indianapolis called Blue Lock. Um, and Blue Lock is a cloud uh, computing company, um, which is about as B2B as it gets. So they sell IT to IT guys um, in the cloud. So if you check out bluelock.com, um, that site went live um, almost a year ago to the day. So it was one of the initial responsive sites that we did. It's very much B2B, it's very friendly and easy to use and very icon driven. So um, I think that's a good example of 
how this applies very directly to B2B and not just B2C. Great. Great. Well, thank you for the questions, everybody. We had a lot of good questions and, uh, and a lot of good information from Josh. I do want to encourage you, everybody, to uh, take us up on that free trial offer of logmycalls.com. Um, the, uh, the information, we'll send an email out that will have the link to the recording as well. And then also a reminder about the free trial offer. And then uh, uh, Josh, I think, will be in touch with you about the free chapter of his book and uh, a link to that site as well. Is that right, Josh? Yeah, that sounds great. I'm uh, looking forward to hearing from anybody. And if, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. Again, that, uh, that site is milesdesign.com slash rwd. Awesome. Josh, thank you very much for your time. Any last uh, words or, or last thoughts for the, for the crew here? Well, McKay, first of all, thank you so much for having me. I enjoyed uh, talking to your audience here about responsive web design. And, uh, you know, when it comes to challenges like this, I just like to uh, think back to the Greek philosopher Yoda who said, do or do not, there is no try. <laughs> I like that a lot. The great philosopher Yoda to end the webinar today. How appropriate. So, Josh, thank you again, and thank you, everybody, for coming. Uh, you'll get an email uh, in the next uh, little while that will have a link to the video where you can watch this and share it with your family, friends, acquaintances, and loved ones. And uh, you'll get an email from Josh that has the uh, chapter of the book. So thanks again, everybody, and thank you again, Josh. Everybody have a good day. Thank you. See ya.